All right, moving along to the A command. And much like the C command, this uh, command is also split up into two different sections. It's A something zero to fade things up and A zero something to fade things down. I'll show you this by loading a module. It's called example. And let me start by cleaning things up by doing this. I'll go to track two and choose a sample which is a minor chord and it sounds like this. Now, let's say this is the intro to the song. So, I want this sample to be quiet to start with, so I'll put a C00 here to make the volume zero. Then I'm going to slowly fade it up using the A something zero command, and I want this to go slowly, so I'll just put a one here. And let's see how this sounds. And there's also an E command to make things even slower, but I'll get back to you on that one. Now, as you can see up here, the initial volume for sample number 9 is 2C, but that doesn't really matter because as long as we write A10 all the time, the volume will continue to increase until it reaches 40, the maximum volume for any sample. Now let's say I want to crossfade this chord into another chord. That means playing two samples at a time, so I'll need another track. I'll put the next chord here, and I want the first sample to slowly fade out with the uh, A01 command, like this, and I'll make sure it's quiet at the end by putting a C00 there, like I'm doing with this one here, making sure it's quiet to start with, and putting A10 all the way to make it fade up. So now it should be a crossfade, let's listen. Beautiful. And that's just the first of many ways to use the A command. I'll show you another one by creating a new pattern like this. And I'm going to choose a sample called Alien. And I'm going to make a little tune like this. Now I want to fade this whole sequence out. And I can't just put A01 on all of these notes. Because ProTracker will try to play all of these notes with the sample volume 30 and then try to fade it out with A01 individually, like this. And that's not what I want. But we can do like we did with the C command in the last episode. I'll remove the sample number and ProTracker will remember the last volume it played, like this. And the fade in works the same way, like this. I'll make the first note quiet and I'll remove the sample number and I'm going to use the A10 command to fade it in and let's hear it. Next I'll show you another popular way of using the A command. I'm creating a new pattern like this. I'm going to use track number two and choose a sample called chip. So it's time to lower the volume of your speakers or headphones because this might hurt your head a bit. Alright, are you ready? Let's go. Terrible. Now, I'll put the A command on each and every one of these notes like we did before. Only difference is, now I want ProTracker to fade it out really, really quickly. So I'll put the highest value for fade out, it's AOF, and listen. Nice. And I'll show you a different way to use this command. By creating a new pattern, I'm going to go back to my old minor chord sample and put it here. And first I'll show you the wrong way to do this. I'll add some A commands to this. And I want each note to fade out quickly but with different values to create a cool rhythm like this. Listen to this. As you can hear, the sound is a little flat, and the reason is that every time a note is played, the sample will start from the beginning. I'll show you in the sampler. Let's hit play and have a look. To prevent this from happening, I'll delete all of these notes again, and instead of putting the notes, I'll put the sample number. So it's a sample number 9, and I'll put 9 all the way here before the command, and listen to this. That's much better, and I'll show you in the sampler as well. Now the whole sample is played. 
So, what happens if you change one of these sample numbers to a different sample number, like 3? Well, that depends on a whole lot of things and I strongly advise you not to do this. It's called the sample swap quirk and it's not very compatible even between different versions of ProTracker. I'll talk more about this in the Arpeggio episode. Alright, let's do a quick recap to show you how much we've learned so far. I'll show you a pattern that only contains commands you already know. Listen to this. I'll put a link to this module in the description below. And that concludes this episode, so thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, and I'll see you in the next episode.